By the way, who, who got to watch the debate last night? Two people. <laughs> my assignment for my logic class was to watch at least part of the debate and analyze an argument from each of them. Uh, and I've already gotten some of their responses, and it's kind of kind of neat. Um, but when we're uh, discussing Plato, who's Aristotle's teacher, at least for 20 years, among others, I'm sure. Um, we can tell from the last few dialogues, at least, of Plato, um, and the Parmenides is the one that stands out in my mind, because that's, that's a dialogue where, where uh, Plato really ends up uh, finding out that his, his ideas are not really adequate uh, to uh, an explanation of how we know things. Um, one of the problems that comes up with them, besides, of course, the paradox, um, is the idea, uh, and I can't get away from the word, if we're going to discuss them, right, uh, of, of, of a fuzzy term. Uh, my favorite fuzzy term is a bald person. You know, uh, you know, if you were to say a bald person isn't fuzzy, well, but that's fuzzy because there are, like, am I bald? I don't know. I have a bald spot. Does that make me bald? Um, I get this, by the way, from my mother. Uh, and, 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 and this. This is, uh, you know, my mother as well. My dad had any dark you know, hair until he had cancer. But that was, that was like he was 86. And yes, it, it destroyed him. Actually, I don't think it was the cancer. It was the treatment for it. You know, the chemo stuff obliterates you, apparently. You know, he, he looked fine until he started having those chemo treatments. And then he couldn't play golf anymore. And all that kind of stuff. Because of uh, chemo treatments, basically, the doctors were hoping he kills the cancer completely. Yeah. Well, hopefully, that kind of treatment is going to be improving, and we're not going to have the same kind of result. But well, we shall see. Hopefully not too soon. Um, but in any case, uh, baldness is not the only fuzzy term. You know, uh, the one I really uh, like in general are colors. You know, not only did the Greeks, you know, in Homer's period, have much fewer colors, and the colors don't seem like they were actually describing what we mean by color today. Uh, they instead seem to be reflecting brightness and, and other characteristics. I, I think I mentioned the wine dark sea, you know, as, as a famous quote. But, but um, one of Britain's prime ministers was a, a Greek specialist who did a lot of work on Homer's Iliad and Odyssey came up with the interesting question about colors. But the, uh, the colors that we know of, uh, uh, like blue, you know, uh, how many kinds of blue are there? Yeah, yeah exactly. There's an infinite t uh, number of possible colors. I, mean, I, I remember going into Sears to buy paint, and you know, yeah, the, the goal was to buy a can of white paint. And, there were just so many varieties of white, I was lost, you know, because, you know, oh, what, what, and by the way, I'm apparently Caucasian, even though I've never been to the Caucasus Mountains, but, you know, I mean, that's middle of Asia, in a place where, you know, I don't think you can even get there, really, you know, without camels or something to get there. Um, I don't know, I don't know what kind of transportation. Ah, but in any case, uh, um, so I'm also considered white, and I don't know about you, but if you think of yourself as white, you'd be like, no, not even close. This is white, I would say, right? This is not. <laughs> uh, in fact, I don't believe in race. I mean, I think there's a human race, right? But I think biologists are right when they say there's no actual determining point at which we can say, aha, according to this person's DNA, they're this race, or they're this one, or whatever. You know, it seems like it was a social construct. I like that. 
and the idea that race is a social construct, that we're actually all, and, and you know, the real, real measure of this is if you can mate with a person, uh, and, and then, like, you're at least in the same species, right? You know, that's kind of a real clue. I think about Thomas Jefferson and his slave uh, that he uh, uh, was related to. Uh, his uncle had sex with at least one of his slaves and had a, a daughter. And that daughter, when the uncle died, right? You're familiar with, with this? No? Not familiar with it. So, you know, they had slaves back there. And Jefferson's uncle had slaves and Jefferson had slaves. And when his uncle died, he inherited his uncle's estate, including the slaves, including his cousin, basically, right? Uh, and she was a young girl when uh, Jefferson was uh, sent to Europe to be the uh, ambassador uh, for the new nation. And he took his slave girl uh, with him. Uh, and when uh, uh, she got old enough, uh, remember by this time his wife had died. She made him promise never to marry again because she didn't want her children to have a stepmother. But in any case, uh, uh, when his uh, cousin was old enough, she, I guess, became quite attractive. And so Jefferson actually ended up having more children by her uh, than by his, pre his actual wife, right? Um, and by the way, when they have reunions, family reunions today, there's way more people that are descended from her uh, than from uh, his, his, his wife. So that's one of my favorite examples of you know the difficulty of that whole business, that social construct of, of race and so on. You're, all, you're not familiar with, with this? Hemings? Uh, I'll, I'll, I mean, if it's on the internet, as long as it's not migrants eating dogs and cats, that's actually, uh, there's some things you could see on the internet that are not believable, right? Uh, but Sally, Hemings. Um, whatever. The Life of Sally Hemings. Etc. Um, and when Jefferson died, um, when George Washington died, he released all of his slaves. But when Jefferson died, he didn't release any of his slaves, as far as we know. Uh, especially not Sally. He was worried that if she were released, she probably wouldn't be able to survive on her own. So she needed to stay within the protection of the estate, the assumption being that they would protect their, their people. Uh, if you release them, then basically everyone else was going to treat them very poorly. Uh, so they're, they're better off on the Jefferson estate, uh, etc. So look her up if, if you're, you're not familiar with Sally. Uh, and they were cousins. Uh, and the DNA tests that they, you know, the, it demonstrates all of that. So color. I, this, I started this off as a, as a rant on color. Um, really, what I was going to first mention was today is the anniversary from 23 years ago of the destruction of the Twin Towers. Notice I wore a little <laughs> flag as a um, reminder of that. Uh, but enough said on that. We're all familiar with that. Um, but back to colors. Colors is an infinite. If you look at the color wheel, you know how can you find uh, exactly the color? Uh, do we invent new colors as we see them? Um, but the beauty of Plato's theory of ideas was that it was relatively simple. If you just had the one idea, and then all of the things that seem to be that to have a family resemblance to that can be 
remembered by us as we experience it as that idea because our minds theoretically are connected to the ideas so oh I, I know that's a table uh, not exactly the same table as an ideal table uh, in fact I, I guess a bed uh, would be you know we know what a bed is but look at all the varieties of beds that are out there um, and if you draw a picture of a bed Plato was even you know more horrified by that because a picture of a bed isn't even a physical bed and for him a physical bed isn't even close to the ideal bed which is just an abstraction right uh, so there are problems with the theory uh, that you know, Aristotle clearly understands that this is not really a very um, functional theory to explain how our knowledge works and even though he loves those uh, who uh, came up with the ideas the theory of ideas he says it's kind of interesting because at the time apparently it was improper to refer to someone by name that you knew so he doesn't say Plato by name so he refers to him as those who love the ideas right um, I disagree you know basically uh, and he goes on to argue um, that you need categories um, Aristotle can Category. <laughs> I guess we could just go with this. Is that all ten? Substance, quantity, quality, relation, place, time, situation, condition, action, and passion. Okay, that looks like pretty much. Is that ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How about that? So everything that you want to describe has to have all ten of these categories. Uh, number one, it has to have stuff, substance. It has to be physically here. Abstractions don't exist. Period, right? So the whole concept of, of an idea being something that kind of like the sun shines down and makes it possible for us to see things. Remember the allegory of the cave, right? And that kind of stuff. Um, that's simply wrong. Uh, in order for something to exist, it has to have physical substance. So that's number one. And then, anything that does have physical substance is countable. How many of them are there? How many desks are in this room? How many people are in this room? How many rooms are in this room? One, right? You know, but it's countable, right? And then the second thing is it has quality. Now, the odd thing uh, for Aristotle is quality usually refers to positive or negative. But you could probably come up with other characteristics of something that would refer to the quality of it. Maybe is it a good chair? You know, a good comfortable chair? Uh, I'm not sure. That probably moves on to relation. But in any case, uh, relation, or the relationships it has with other things. Everything you could describe as having relationships with other things. Right? Even if the relationship has, has no relationship. That's a relationship, right? Uh, kind of important. A place, everything that exists is some place. You might not be able to you know, figure out exactly where those two astronauts are, if they're out in space on a uh, spacewalk uh, today, uh, anybody heard? Are they okay? Yeah, two of them are staying in the capsule. They're okay? Cool. You know everything. I like to read. Pardon? I like to read. Your, your name wasn't originally Hermione, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you read the books, she's not the only smart one, actually. Yeah. However, and I'm, I'm spoiled rotten because I, I have all, you know, I have the set in French, I have the set in German, I have the set in Russian, I have, you know, sitting by my bed at night, and I especially like reading it in French. For some reason, French is so relaxing. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know. 
it's kind of smooth or something. Um, so anyway, um, relation, it has to be in a place, it has to be in a time. Because it's right now, you know, or, you know, in 1776, you know, or, or you know, last night, you know, uh, et cetera, right? And the, the uh, convention center in Philadelphia, 